Hey you guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to Global Ventures here on Planet Coaster. Uh, first thing I really must do is apologise for the horrendous gap between videos. Um, mainly due to the fact that my PC kept overheating because of the heat. Uh, also because I've been doing XVI stuff, as I've already said in previous videos. Um, and also because I, I didn't fall out of love with the game, but I fell out of love with the idea of building... Uh, in this game and I, I needed to take a break have a look at some other people's projects and get some inspiration for myself uh, which is something I have done also something I've done is built a new computer so um, you can see the the screen is a little jittery here and there during this video uh, again I can only apologize for that in the future um, the quality and the frame rate should improve greatly because I'll be using my new PC to record Planet Coaster footage uh, so what are we doing in today's episode? Well, over the last few episodes we've rebuilt Bandito Escape the West. Uh, and actually even now, um, this footage that you're watching now was recorded, I think, a month and a half ago, maybe longer. Um, and since then, uh, I've actually gone and tweaked the layout a little bit further. Um, I think the curve going into the uh, dive drop after the brake run that you see me messing around with there, I think a lot of that has been rejigged. Um, you can also see I'm, I'm trying to rebuild the little bits of track here as well. Uh, I'll talk about what I'm doing on screen in just a second. But um, the finale of the ride. So you come out of the brake run after the tunnel. Um, so you, you, you climb up the lift hill. You drop down the clock tower into the old mine shafts. Uh, you travel through the mine shafts. You come out of the mine shafts. You do the Immelman. You do the corkscrew. You do the overbank turn. I think there's a zero G roll in there somewhere as well. Or some kind of heartline roll. And then you hit a brake run. Uh, and after that brake run, you drop down under the path, which is one of the entrances to Legend of the Frontier. Uh, and then you do a cutback corkscrew, or, you know, just a cutback. It's not a corkscrew. Um, it's a cutback. And then you go up into the final brakes. Um, I wanted to change that because I don't like cutbacks. I don't class them as inversions myself, even though they technically go over 135 degrees, which is what defines an inversion. To me, they just never have felt like an inversion. Um, they feel a bit cheap uh, and yeah they feel a bit cheap so there are rides out there roller coasters out there that have cutbacks um, and they, they're, they're, they're part of the inversion count I can't dispute that but I feel like if you can put something else in that place then put something else in that place so I wanted to put something else in that place uh, I, twi I, twied. I tried a twisted horseshoe roll um, but the, uh, the space is too small for that really to work. Plus it would involve a long uh, tunnel again with a, a curve. So it's not really something that would be realistic. Uh, so my other solution was this kind of rising inline twist. A bit like how Mystery Mine and Dollywood ends. Uh, so you have this like rising inline twist that then goes into a sharp bend. A uh, 180 degree turn to the left and then another... Uh, descending inline twist that takes you back under the path again. I like it in theory, but I am planning on building a, a RMC coaster on the other side of the park, and I think that would be a better ride to have that kind of inversion on. It was actually inspired by Untamed at Wallaby Holland, which is the rebuild of the old wooden coaster Robin Hood. Um, it has I can't remember what it, exactly what it's called, but it's like it's like a 270 degree anti-clockwise roll that then goes into like an overbank turn and then it goes into a 270 degree clockwise roll uh, it's, so it's like two inversions in one and that's what I wanted to use for this but I think you know RMC have obviously designed it and created it on Untamed so it should probably go on an RMC coaster uh, really so we'll we'll uh, we'll shift it over there and we'll put something else in this spot this is the cutback I'm talking about right now um, the reason I want two inversions instead of one is because we're we're actually tied with the smiler at the moment for most inversions. I'd like to hit 15 if possible. I think 15 would be a good inversion count to hit. So uh, we'll see if we can break the record. Uh, we'll look into that. Uh, this part of the the video is going to be terraforming. As you can see, I'm I'm rebuilding uh, the station building for Bandito and the show building for Bandito. I'm checking the clearance there as well to make sure that the the wheels, the wheel sets have enough space to go through the uh, the little camel hill there, and also through the inline 
Uh, is it an inline? I suppose it's more of a heartline roll. It's neither really in the in the actual dictionary definition. It's more like a barrel roll. Um, but it's a it's an inversion. So <laughs> the inversion I'll just refer to it as. There's me messing around with the camera again. I'm still not 100% happy with the launch. The launch itself is fine. The speed of it is fine. It's the constant up down up down bit that I'm not that happy with. Um, there's not a lot I can do about that though because we we need to thread through all the other track that we've already built. Uh, so to change the launch would also involve rebuilding all of the launch uh, all of the track before the launch, which would be a bit of a nightmare. So I'd rather not do that. Uh, the other headache I've got to deal with in the not too distant future is trying to find a way to bury it all underground to make it dark. Fingers crossed we can actually do that. Uh, this is me digging out some trenches as well so that the track has space to go through. You will see me re rebuild the pathway over the top. Uh, for, I think I yeah I think I flatten the land here and build it up and then over in that gap. This is me starting that job now. Uh, tried to make the support as close to the track as possible because I always like the idea of that. Uh, and then here, path the pathing system in this game is not the best. Everyone knows that it's no secret. But sometimes um, it's an absolute nightmare, and this was one of those cases. I don't like building flat bridges because of that. You can see there even there's like a spine in the middle of the path that keeps sticking up. Uh, I do eventually get it flat. When the path system works, it works perfectly, but getting it to work is always a, a headache. Uh, speaking of headache, I think this coaster is actually going to cause a few headaches for, for riders. There's a few jolty sections. Uh, the the section, the big Immelman that we have after the little uh, bridge that you saw me build just then, um, the, the transition from that Immelman into the 0G roll is quite jerky, so I might have to redo that. Which again is something I, I would rather avoid having to do, but I don't think in this instance it's possible to avoid having to do it. Uh, so we will have to rebuild that. I think I might just build a hand-built 0G roll rather than um, the, the pre-made one. Uh, and a lot of inversions actually on this ride are probably going to get rebuilt as hand-built rather than pre-built. Um, because they're smoother at the end of the day. They are in, in fact smoother when you hand-build it and you use the smoothing tool. Sometimes it's it's a little bit jerky still, but the majority of the time it is nice and smooth. Uh, and this is the big bit of the build right now. This is me going in and redoing uh, the entire show building for the opening act of Bandito. So that involves, as you can see here, rebuilding the walls, rebuilding the floor. The queue line is also going to have to get rebuilt slightly because it does jut into the, uh, the bank vault scene of the ride. Um... And there's a few other bits here and there that will have to get changed. Here I'm sizing up. Can I fit a wall in between the launch and the uh, inversion there? I think in the end I was able to. Uh, I don't mind too much if the wall sticks through the catwalk because the catwalk is wide enough that you'd be able to walk through it anyway. So you're not fouling the track. Um, plus it, it kind of adds to the theming if the catwalk is part of the wall rather than there's a catwalk and then there's a wall if that makes sense. So you, adding them together rather than splitting them up is actually a good thing um, from a, a theming point of view. Uh, doesn't always work from a logistics point of view and that is something that you'll notice on a lot of my rides is, is a little bit of an issue there but th this one it worked out okay. Here you can see what I mean about the launch so uh, you do kind of undulate a lot. I think I did smooth it out a little bit more. One of the solutions to that would be the, the first drop of the ride. So you come out of the station, you turn right and then you drop down into uh, the the basement of the bank. Um, if I le lessened that drop, um, you know, didn't make it drop down as much, you can still get the little hop up and over the inversion but the, it gives me more space to actually build the launch at a slightly higher elevation. Because the, the problem really is the first bit of the launch is nice and smooth so you stop on the launch track you slowly start rolling forward you go down and then it's that first bit where you swoop back up again it is a bit excessive um, once you get to the top of that bit you then drop down again uh, and I think actually I don't think you drop under anything the second time around so I could smooth that one out a little bit more you do have to go back up though to go over the uh, the exit to the first inversion so uh, it, it's difficult. 
it is difficult but if we can get it to work it'll be very uh, satisfying I forgot the word then I forgot I forget a lot of words these days I don't know what's wrong with me uh, so this is me uh, covering up the the roll here and the uh, the helix into the roll um, I think at this point uh, one of the great things about recording these time lapses is I don't have to ha record game sound I don't have to um, only have Planet Coaster running on the PC while I'm doing this so I was actually on Discord um, talking to people. I think at this point I was sharing videos of Rainbow Six Vegas, which is one of my favourite games uh, on the Xbox 360. Um, I mean that that has no reference to this at all. It's just a little tidbit I thought I'd throw in. But you'll notice that my builds actually are, are pretty good when I'm on Discord and, and not really focusing too much on what I'm doing. And it sounds a bit weird to say that, but um, I think one of the problems with Planet Coaster not just for me but for a lot of content creators is I think sometimes we overthink it and we're too focused on what we're doing and sometimes you just you gotta let go and, and just build the first thing that comes to you um, and I've mentioned this before in this series uh, people who, who say they have designers block uh, and they're, they're struggling to come up with ideas I feel like that's part of the uh, the symptom for overthinking it is when you can't come up with ideas um, it's because, you, you know, it's that saying, a watch pot never boils. You spend so long trying to think of something that you can't think of something. And it, it's it's like a paradox. It works in the opposite direction. Uh, so, if, you know, as I say, going on Discord for me was perfect. Because I was occasionally telling the guys what I was doing. But a lot of the time it was just me chatting about other random things um, at like 12 o'clock at night whilst building this. And I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to cover everything in walls and ceilings and floors and roofs. Um, so I was just doing it autonomously whilst chatting. And the result, it's a big blank canvas at the moment. It's a big empty building. Um, we will have to go in and, and, and fill it with theming. Some of it I did kind of experiment with at the time. So uh, there's an animatronic that I do add. I can't remember if it's in this footage or not or whether I did it off camera. Uh, but the section where you stop on the launch track, I've actually got it set up now so that uh, a sheriff appears from behind a box and starts shooting at you. And that's kind of what triggers the launch. Because you are waiting. Oh yeah, that, there's me realising that people are going to get decapitated on that section of the ride. Uh, that's no longer the case. Um, you are waiting on the launch track for like three or four seconds. And if you just stop and then start again, you don't really get that feeling of suspense. So to have it stop and then it's a bit like Jurassic Park the ride and Jurassic World the ride where you get to the top of the, the lift hill just before the drop and the T-Rex comes out or the, um, I'm trying to remember what the one from Jurassic World's called, uh, it slips my mind. It's like the Iguanodon or something like that, although it's not the Iguanodon because I think that's uh, a much smaller dinosaur, but um, I should ask Ben, he'll know. Uh, but yeah, it, it's that feeling of suspense and as you go up and up that lift hill towards it, it, it you know, it lunges out at you. Uh, you really do feel like it's going to hit you, and then you go down the drop. So I wanted something a bit like that, but obviously this isn't a dinosaur-themed ride, so I couldn't use a dinosaur. So why not use an animatronic that shoots you, or shoots at you? Because that's good suspense. So the story of the ride would be you're you're sitting waiting for the uh, explosives to go off um, on the door ahead of you, so that you can make your escape and you think you're in the clear and then suddenly uh, you know law enforcement appears from behind some boxes and starts shooting at you so you're now having to charge towards the doors as they're about to explode uh, and that gives you that sort of near miss kind of feeling and it works quite well because as you get to the doors a bit like test track as well at Epcot as you get to the doors the explosion um, happens the doors fly open and you sail through so it's 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 a near miss <clears throat> It's a it's a thematic near miss as a, opposed to an actual near miss, um, but I think it adds to the story a little bit. Um, I think that was the other problem I had with the original Bandito is I had the idea for the story way before I had the idea for the ride, uh, so I was trying to tailor the ride to fit the story. Whereas what you should do is tailor the story to fit the ride. So um, constantly tweaking the the narrative of the ride to make it fit with the the actual ride that you've built uh, works a lot better. Um, so there are there have been little tweaks here and there. So like um, you know the the location of the vault, uh, the fact that there's a shootout now, um, lots of little things like that. Lots of little little details just makes the ride 
that bit better in my opinion plus a lot of the um, the tinkering that I'm doing allows me to hone my building skills a lot more so you know building this big empty shell is fine um, doesn't add anything to the story of the ride but it allows me to practice building show buildings which is something that I'm going to need a lot of practice for for excuse me for for some rides that I've got planned in the future including the dark ride that I'm planning on building in Legend of the Frontier uh, I will give a little bit of a spoiler alert here it does involve using the shooting interactive shooting ride that was released as part of the Ghostbusters update so um, there'll be a lot of that coming to the channel very very soon uh, and it will involve building a huge show building um, so yeah this is the this is the practice that I need essentially for that uh, this is the location of the doors it's, go it's going to be like a, a little underground tunnel that leads to like a back entrance to the vault uh, and that will be where the, the gold used to be delivered straight from the mines so again it's a, it's a little uh, thing that adds to the story you a lot of people like theme parks tend to build things like this and don't really explain why they exist um, and a lot of the time that's fine but I like there to be reasons why things are the way they are so this would be as I said it's, it's the little back entrance that leads straight to the vault uh, that people used to or the miners used to use to, to take the gold straight from the mine into the uh, into the vault uh, and then it would be smelted into gold bars and then it would also be taken straight back to the vault I don't know whether gold ore was actually stored in, in vaults way back then but um, I mean they're expensive items uh, even though they're not gold bars the fact that you can make gold bars out of them makes them a valuable commodity so uh, I think they would be stored somewhere secure at least a bank vault happening to be just across the road from the mine um, would probably be very convenient for the, the mining company this is me adding a roof now pretty much happy with everything inside the, uh, the building here um, one thing that's important to remember is the section after the first drop so the little turnaround the inversion and then the rise up into the brakes that will all be underground so it should in theory be in darkness so there's no need to add uh, extra theming and scenery and animatronics and things like that because it should be all covered up by darkness uh, the section where the launch starts though will be out in the open so it'll still be indoors but it will be not uh, underground so there should be enough light there that you'd be able to see the animatronic um, there'll be a few lights there there'll be some sound effects and things like that uh, and then the exit to the tunnel um, into the little uh, airtime hill before the the banana roll uh, that will all be lit up as part of the launch sequence so that's why it's a big empty box essentially because it doesn't need to have anything extra in there Bill Lights saw the ride at Thorpe Park the the first section of that is in complete darkness so there's there's sound effects but there's no actual theming in that apart from the swinging axe blades but again it's it's lit up so that you can see them um, so yeah overall the first bit of Bandito I'm really really happy with uh, it's the last section now and say so if I can replace that cut back with a uh, two inversions instead of one then we should hit the record which would be great uh, and it should also make a better ride because um, as I say I, I, maybe cheap isn't the right word to describe cutbacks but I do feel like they're cheating in many ways because uh, it's a bit like Untamed actually I've mentioned it previously Untamed has uh, a secret inversion as it were and it's it's an overbank turn that that technically qualifies as an inversion because it goes over 135 degrees and there is a lot of debate on the roller coaster reddit community as to is that actually an inversion because by definition it is but by aesthetics it isn't really it doesn't again it's it's personal preference but for me an inversion should go through a full 360 degrees or close to but, I mean, that's just my opinion. Anyway, time to wrap up the video. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Like I said, sorry that it's been a long time since the last video. Hopefully, the next one will be next week. I will start recording in batches again uh, so that we should get a lot of content produced over the next couple of weeks uh, for the next few weeks. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and, of course, if you enjoyed the series. Um, drop some comments down below. I will be enabling comments again on the channel. So drop some comments down below with ideas for future episodes. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. And until next time, I will see you soon.